Hi there, I thought I'd do a video showing you how I brightly light 300 LEDs using a simple dual thief block and oscillator setup. And of course the traditional half dead A battery for the power source for now. Of course many other power sources can be used like um, solar or wind or oops, crystal batteries and earth batteries and as I've lately discovered, even capacitated transient surges, depending on which setup is used. But for this video for now, I'll keep it simple with reference to its original inventor, Zed Kaparnik, who published this circuit in the 1999 November issue of Everyday Practical Electronics. This circuit has been modified in more than a thousand ways by thousands of inventors and experimenters, and now including me. Everything that I'm showing you here is what I've been playing around with concerning the dual thief the past few months. Um, there's dozens of internet forums discussing its topics and uses, and mathematics, hidden qualities, and even more websites on the subject too. So after replicating dozens of other people's work, I decided to try my own modifications using hundreds of different coil setups. Um, different cores, transistors, resistors, capacitors, even huge single coil transformers like, like this big beastie here, I'll do that in another video, can I, single coil transformers can be used as a dual thief also, other video for that one. As you can see I've got a lot to play around with, every single component you see here is all in perfect working order, all tested and it's all from salvaged parts from the scrapyard I work in. I've never paid for a single component here, and I've just got thousands of it, with buckets full. I mean literally buckets full. It's just starting to get out of, con out of control some of the stuff I've collected. It's just, I must have a thousand different coils and a million different resistors and transistors. and um, This isn't even the half of it. Wait till you see uh, my magnet motor side, I'll do that in another video. I've got lots of experiments with them with the dual thief as well when it comes to trying to charge batteries up. Um, most of the stuff I've got is quite common from the likes of computer monitors, um, inverters, converters, and bat microwave ovens, and radios, TVs, faxes, and even the batteries I got are from the scrapyard too. Um, so I've just got too much stuff. So nowadays I'm only interested in rare findables, like um, rare findables, like control panels from factory machines, uh, industrial weighing control panels, DJ mix index, complicated disco lights, um, security systems, hospital equipment, and other rare findables. So before I show you how you can also light 300 LEDs and more actually, a lot more than this, but I'm just keeping it as simple as I can. Um, from a half dead day battery, I want to inspire you to use recycled components to build just about any electronics project with, once you get enough, maybe someday boxes filled and organized and of course tested. Testing is very important. It takes hours and hours and hours of work and months and months to get these things organized. I've got a lot of work ahead of me now. Um, I'm going to take a quick trip around the scrapyard I work on and get some stuff. Um, I'll show you how I remove components quickly and efficiently. And then we'll come back to this dual thief type setup and I'll show you what I've done with it and why. And remember, all of what you see here is only the half of it. And this is all free of charge for me. I believe if free energy is to be obtained somehow, then it should be free. Hence its name, free energy. Let's take a little wander. Okay, this part of the scrapyard is where I always source all my electronics. Electronics section of the scrapyard. Every week we've got something different here. Looks like we've got some nice telephones, some radios, faxes, a couple of computers, a couple of monitors. Um, quite often we find some special stuff like a control panel where there's lovely big toroids in it or 
some high voltage neon transformer, I mean the list goes on and on and on. We'll take one of these computers back with us and one of them monitors and I'll take a couple of radios too. Okay, here's today's takings. We've got six computers today. Stereo system, a couple of big toroids, a couple of little toroids, a couple of big weird capacitors I've yet to play around with. Um, my monitor. There was a few monitors on the scrapyard today, but I just took this one because it's got a production date of 2005. All I'm going to be taking apart with us today is just this big computer, because um, this is what I reckon you'll probably have at home. If you're going to throw away your computer, don't. There's a lot of nice things inside this computer I'm going to show you. And also inside the monitor, there's a few nice things as well. I'm going to start taking it apart and show you how I remove the ICs also. I've taken out all the screws from this computer to show you all I want from it is its power converter. Because inside the power converter is where we're going to find toroids, which are brilliant for dual thief experiments. And there's a whole host of resistors in there and capacitors, which are great for playing around with dual thieves. Here's the power converters from the smaller computers I've just shown you. I like these ones. We've got eight toroids in there, a whole host of other resistors and capacitors. Here's the circuit board from the monitor I've just shown you. I like this circuit board. Um, got a whole host of resistors, capacitors, transistors, voltage regulators, diodes, heat sinks, the flyback transformer, oscillators, push button, I mean, the list goes on. Um, a lot of the component values are printed on this board as well as identification letters on the transistors. So for example, these transistors printed on the board is BCE for base collector emitter and the other one has got BCE. So it's going to be quite useful, save me time later identifying the base collector and emitter. Um, I could sit here for hours with my desoldering kit on this. But I'm going to save some time, I'm going to use an angle grinder on the back of it. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that, get all these components off, take what I want in the space of 10 minutes. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is the way I personally remove components from all types of circuit boards. Like I said, I could sit for hours with my desoldering kit carefully removing the components I want from this monitor board and probably damage some of them in the process. However, my way has always worked for me, giving me undamaged, long-legged parts, but it does come with many dangers, so listen close. First things first, if you're going to do this, do it outside. My workshop garage door just behind me is wide open, as is this door, so I've got a quite a good strong draft blowing out of the door, which is where I'm going to aim the angle grinder sparks. I cannot emphasize enough how imperative it is that you do this outside with the wind to your back, aiming the angle grinder sparks to go with the wind, because the dust that will be flying off of here is full of all kinds of nasty toxins and worse. So a breathing mask is imperative, and obviously safety specs too, um, some ear protection, definitely. Oh, and I almost forgot, while we're on the subject of crucial safety, before touching any circuit board of any kind with capacitors, check with your multimeter for any voltage across any capacitors and discharge them simply by touching both points of the prongs on the capacitor with a screwdriver or a well-insulated piece of wire. Um, note that the, the angle grinder discs that I'm going to be using are these big fat grinding discs um, not, not a cutting disc like this one that's just ineffective um, sanding discs work also I've got some sanding disc here but they're not so fast as these big fat juicy grinding discs okay um, I think I'm going to go ahead and start When I'm grinding, I'm barely scratching the surface, taking care not to grind too deep. Okay. Alright, I did say it would take me less than 10 minutes, and that took me 2 minutes. Look at all this stuff just popped out of place. Absolutely perfect. Let's have a look at some of this stuff. Got 
nice big prongs on all the capacitors ready to be soldered into something else i've got a couple of other projects apart from the dual thief some metal detector project and a whole host of other projects all this all these components are going to be ideal for it this is great look these just pop out with the minimum of effort and that's the way i remove my circuits from circuit boards one thing though is um the the angle ground has got kind of a lot of dust in it so that's going to call for some air compressor just give it a good old clean with the air compressor clean up this whole place with it also my clothes have got a little bit of that dust on but it's quite easily washed out so make sure you wear some nice old clothes now i've got to do is sort out all this stuff i suppose by now you must be thinking hang on a minute aren't these components static sensitive well let me just say that if they were surely they wouldn't work after what you just see me do with that small angle grinder and every single transistor or mosfet or voltage regulator i've ever tested using this dual thief setup all work fine um, I mean every single one so far and I've tested hundreds to determine if they're MPN or PMP. However, what is static sensitive are microchips and computer memory cards and the tiniest transistors. Then I thought perhaps someone might think I have some hidden button batteries in this emergency cell phone charger or behind the LEDs somewhere to get these LEDs so blindingly bright. Um, let me assure you, I've no need or desire to fool anybody in any way. What you see is what you get. Um, anyone can replicate this with the right combination of transistor and pot um, tuned into the transformer, which brings me to the secret of this simple setup. Because after months and months and months of studying and experimenting with different transformer dynamics, um, trying to relate it all to a dual thief, the word eddy currents kept popping in my head and I knew that the core of any transformer is a huge contributing factor concerning eddy currents and how these thin steel laminations minimise eddy currents. But where could I find a one-to-one -one transformer with these thin steel laminations? Is there even such a transformer? I mean, all these one-to-one -one transformers I've ever found only have one solid, solid ferrite core and give off that high-pitched tone or whine when used with the dual thief. Um, then I came across these filter chokes from inside computers, and that's what I'm using here. Um, I'll show you how I've modified it. Simply took an eraser, scraped away the, the black resin from in here, and then cut the wire to make it two wires and that's exactly what I've done here and boy does it work it works well and the great thing is there's no high-pitched whining tone using the, this particular setup I've just shown but it does whine using other setups I'm almost out of time on YouTube um, here's my parts list and schematics for what I've just shown you um, I'm going to look at these transformers. Here's this one with the model number, and here's one of these to show you what I've done with it, what I've just explained. Um, here's the, the transistor I'm using, which is here. Um, other transistors work also, but not as good. Um, I like this transformer, but it does flash. I need to use a capacitor with that, but I'm just sticking to this basic setup just now. Um, I'm, I'm going to go now, but um, don't forget to watch my next video where I'm still on my mission to get the most light possible out of half a dead AA battery. Um, next video I'm going to be using single coils for the transformer. Okay, bye for now.